Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now it is Sunday. That means it's time to grow around the nets with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So a few interesting stories to discuss today. First of all, we have Apple and Goldman Sachs back in the news and a new product potentially coming to the market. An interesting but shaky chase rumor from the world of Reddit. Bank of America is getting into the action again with a new credit card and some interesting offers. And we'll close with some potential sign-up bonuses for some cards you might want to take a look at. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and press the subscribe button. Let's go around the net. Okay, so first up, we have Apple and Goldman Sachs batting leadoff. So I'm sure you're very familiar with their partnership with the Apple card. But now it looks like they're in development with a brand new product potentially coming to the market soon. So let's take a look at some of these details. So currently in development between Apple and Goldman Sachs, they have a potential product called Apple Pay Later. So as you might have guessed this is a potential buy now pay later service where this would work through Apple Pay which is interesting because that does not mean it's tied to the Apple card with Apple Pay you can actually link any credit card you want to the Apple Wallet app and that card will then becomes eligible for Apple Pay so that's an important detail to note now obviously this is still in partnership with Goldman Sachs making Goldman Sachs the lender on this right now it's looking like you would still need a application to be approved for this buy now pay later service that they're calling Apple Pay later and so even if you had an Apple card, it looked like this would still be another application through the Apple Wallet app to Goldman Sachs. Now this potential service is interesting because one, it is nice to see the progression of Apple Card or at least Apple Pay in this case as I do think there's still a lot of runway with this product. Now interestingly enough, this is on one hand somewhat kind of counter to Apple's on-brand point with the Apple Card. When the Apple Card came out, they were really pushing financial education and responsibility. So it's a little bit interesting that they would end up coming with a buy now, pay later service. Now, again, it does make sense from the other standpoint that we've seen a rise in popularity in the buy now, pay later services over the past 12 to 18 months. So it does make a lot of sense to why not just take all that money and not leave it on the table. Again, Apple products are very expensive to say the least. However, this does not actually have to be used on Apple merchandise, so they are expanding it out, trying to push the Apple Pay as a network because again, Apple and Goldman Sachs do make a little bit more money when you use the Apple Pay network. So more details to come. We don't have anything on pricing or interest rates or the terms just yet, but I would imagine you see a service come out like this with the next big Apple product release. So maybe September around the iPhone event or a little bit after that, they're rumored to be hopefully releasing those M1X MacBook Pros that I really, really want to get my hands on one. So with Apple's side, let's transition to our next story of the day, and that is our obligatory chase story. Now, this is an interesting interesting run and kind of a loose one at that, but we do have to satisfy the House of Diamond and have a chase store and a recap. Those are just the laws of how the game is played. So there is a Reddit comment or a Reddit chain going, I should say, in the credit cards forum where a Reddit user went into a chase branch and he saw some marketing for what they're calling the Slate Edge card. So if you're unfamiliar, the Slate card was around for some time ago. It was actually Chase's balance transfer card. It didn't get a lot of play because there's no multipliers or anything fancy like that for Trifecta. And then you can't actually get it online, but I still believe you can get it in branch. And I actually owed a uh, viewer an apology because he asked me about the Slate card and I was like, that thing has been gone for years. Apparently it's still around in branch. Well, anyways, this Reddit user went into their local Chase branch and they claim they saw some market material and some posters hanging up for what Chase is calling Slate Edge. But of course, no details yet. Now, I really wish this person had taken a picture, but I'm kind of mentioning this in case any of you venture out to a Chase branch and you see this, you can snap a picture and let us know. So as a result, we don't really have any details around this card. The rumor kind of, again, it's loose, but it does make sense because if you look through Chase's lineup, they don't really have a balanced transfer card in the mix. Now, that might not necessarily be something that a lot of us find value in, but it is a hole in their lineup. At least they're publicly facing online lineup. Again, I do think you can get one in branch. And it would also make sense because card-wise, Chase has been pretty quiet this year. Again, I know they just had the refresh of the Flex and the Unlimited last year, and they've had the 100K sign-up bonus for, this for the CSP. But we haven't really seen them do much as of late new card-wise, so it would make sense to me if they do have something in the works for the latter half of this year. August-September time frame seems to be when Chase likes to push out their new card updates. And of course, it would be nice if there's just one other Chase card you can get for a sign-up bonus and some extra UR points. So now we move from a shaky card story to a solidified actually coming to fruition card story with Bank of America. Yes, Bank of America has often remained quiet and sat on the sideline through these credit card wars, but now it looks like Bank of America is jumping back in and they have a new card that they're actually offering to current customers first and then this card should be available later to the public. So let's take a look at some of those details now. 
So this card is officially called the Bank of America Unlimited Cash Rewards Card. And so what Bank of America has been doing over the last two or three days is actually offering product changes to current customers. Now, that's not particularly interesting on its own, except for the fact that with these product changes, customers are actually getting a sign-up bonus. So the official offer is saying, hey, there's no credit check, there's no hard pull, anything like that. All you have to do is take one of your existing Bank of America cards. It's looking like the cash rewards, the 321 cards are the ones that are getting targeted, but I have seen comments or folks talking about other cards getting targeted. And then if you take the offer and product change, you'll be eligible for a $200 sign-up bonus on the unlimited cash card with $1,000 in spend. So that's pretty interesting on its own because normally product changes do not come with a sign-up bonus at all. So for Bank of America to just step up and say, hey, if you change, you take one of those cards you're not using anymore, we'll just take care of you and get you your 200 bucks. So that's a 20% return on spend, so that's not a bad offer by any means for a card like this that's 1.5%. Now, the email offer does stress and very emphasize that if you are Platinum Honors, then the cash back is actually goes from 1.5 to 2.62%, which is probably make it one of the best, if not the best, catch-all cards around. So if you're unfamiliar with Bank of America Platinum Honors, you do have to have $100,000 in capital with Bank of America or Merrill Lynch. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not when you look at all the investment options that Merrill Lynch has to offer. You can move your 401k or something over there and, you know, be fine. So it's not really that out of reach to think a fair amount of people could have Platinum Honor status. Now, if you're interested in this card as a non-Bank of America customer or you don't want to product change, if when it does come out and is available to the public, then you'll obviously I'll have a full video dedicated to that card where we go in depth and talk about some of the strategy that you might want to play. But for right now as a whole, I think if you get one of these offers and you have a Bank of America card you haven't touched in a while, I think this makes a lot of sense. Because again, let's just say you had a 321, one of their cash rewards cards. You could, in theory, go ahead, take the product change, get the $200, and if you wanted to get that other card later, you could just reapply for it down the road. So, so this makes a lot of sense, and actually, I like it in how Bank of America is setting a trend where companies will start to offer product change or offer sign-up bonuses on product changes. So one more point on this. I do think it's, again, it's interesting to see Bank of America getting into the credit cards wars again. You know, this is a light entry into the wars, but they are having a new card, and they haven't really had a new card in quite some time. I think this is all this whole... You know, everyone getting into the car issue. City has a new card. Wells Fargo, Bank of America. This is all has to do with, you know, card consumers having paid down quite a bit of credit card debt over the last 12 to 18 months. Because as a result, when you pay down your credit card debt, then the companies can't make interest. So this seems to me like this is one big push to get more cards in customers' hands and hopefully get some more credit card debt going so they can start making more money. Again, if Bank of America is targeting folks who probably haven't used their card in a long time saying, hey, you forgot about this. Let me offer you a new one plus 200 bucks. This will get this card back in your wallet. You'll be using it again and you might keep using it this time around. So I think it's very interesting. I like I like it honestly because it does help us. Again, we you know we can just use this to take advantage, use the bank's desperation to get more people to make bad choices, use that to our advantage, take their points, make the bank's money our money and keep it moving. So for that reason, I like it, but that's kind of why I think this is happening, why we're seeing so many different folks get into the credit card space. But again, more details do come on the Bank of America card, especially if they do release it to the public pretty soon. Of course, I'll have a full video on that. With that said, let's take a look at one more quick story, and then we'll close with some credit card offers. So for this story, this section of the show, I'm going to start calling it Wells Fargo did what and just do one of these. Now Wells Fargo is actually ending their secure chat feature, and they actually ended that a few days ago. So if you're in the Wells Fargo portal, you can no longer use a secured message or secured chat to talk to a Wells Fargo customer service rep. This is just one of those things, man. Like, why would you do this? When you take a look at Amex, I've actually got a lot of issues resolved through Amex chat, Chase secured message. All the big guys do this. I don't know why you'd want to force me to call in. Now, in theory, I'm sure Wells Fargo thinks this is going to push people to use more of their self-serve products. I think that's what the statement said. In actuality, I think this will just drive more people to call in. So why, Wells Fargo? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if you like the name of this segment. Of course, maybe we can get a sponsor for this, like City. Like, why did Wells Fargo do it? Sponsored by Citibank. That would be pretty funny. But anyways, let's not end on a sad note. Let's take a look at a few credit card offers we have to close out the show. So first up, we have the IHG Premier Card. IHG here is offering 150,000 points plus a $50 statement credit and the annual fee waived in year number one for $3,000 in spend. Next up, we have the City Premier Card. It's 80,000 points for $4,000 
$80,000 in spend in three months. And $80,000 is a historic high for the Premier, I believe. Premier, not a bad option at all. And plus, you can downgrade it after year number two to a double cash card. Double cash not having a sign-up bonus. So that's probably the best strategy for that one. So next up, we have a card we don't talk about often, but we have the Wyndham Rewards card. So you can earn up to 90,000 bonus points here. This is going to be 60,000 points after spending $1,000 on purchases in the first 90 days. Plus, you could earn an additional 30,000 bonus points after spending a total of $2,000 in the first six months. And we'll round it out with an Amex offer that I think was kind of funny and a little interesting here. So if you're feeling left out that the Platinum card got the clear membership credit of $179, and have no fear because there's a round of Amex offers going around that are actually giving you a free clear membership. So I have the Platinum, I check my gold card Amex offer section, and sure enough, I have the offer to get a free clear membership or the equivalent of a free clear membership to $179. Now I just thought this Amex offer was kind of funny given they just gave this credit to the Platinum card and then you see this very thing show up as an Amex offer on another card. It means if you have more than one Amex card, it's hard to count that as $179 value for the Platinum card if you could get it for free on another much cheaper Amex card. So either way, if you need clear or you have a player two or someone in your life who would also need a clear membership or benefit, this is still a big win, I think. Think, especially if you're someplace that can use the clear membership. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. If you liked it, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, then consider subscribing to the channel, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, with the Sunday recap episode, it's all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. My question to you guys is let me know what you think about the Bank of America card. Are you interested in the product change offer or will you be applying when it goes public? And of course, if there's any other stories or offers that I missed, feel free to drop them down below and we can discuss it in the comments. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you on Monday.